All right, look what just showed up. Bye. Let's get this open. Ugh. Just hit me. Don't go in the street. Oh no. <laughs> What? You're fine. You're okay. It's in here, buddy. You gonna help? Can you pull this one this way? Alright. Just a little backstory before we continue. If you've been watching my channel, uh, you'd know that I had a ton of problems with my Renogy battery shutting off prematurely. At first, I thought it was just user error. I do camp in a lot of cold environments and my van is not insulated. And if you look where my battery placement is, it's right next to the metal of the van and it's just sitting on the floor. I do have a little rubber mat that insulates against the floor, but my thought was that it was just getting too cold. Um, in the morning, whenever I would wake up, I would turn on the van, get the DC to DC charger going and check my Bluetooth app. And I would see that my battery is sitting around 75 to 78 percent it was a little confusing to me so i'm no battery expert i ended up running through the whole winter thinking it's just my fault finally got fed up and contacted renogy and to see like if this was a common problem or if they had a fix for me they ran me through like a week and a half of some testing that they wanted me to charge a battery then discharge a battery take screenshots send them screenshots and then they would send all that stuff to a technical analyst and they would come back and determine whether or not my battery was faulty they came back and said my battery was functioning normal and i'm like yo i'm contacting you because the battery is not functioning normal this is a lithium battery i'm supposed to go down to zero percent and um i live in california so on a warm day I took that same battery and I hooked it up with this inverter to a heat gun. That heat gun drew about 70 amps, 65 to 70 amps. And I depleted the battery as far as I could and it shut off at 77%. Just like when I ran my heater in the van in the cold. So I knew it wasn't the cold and I knew it was a battery problem. I convinced Renogy to pick up the battery and do testing themselves. They emailed me back about a week later and said, you're right, the battery was faulty. Who would have thought? They gave me two options. They gave me an option to get a replacement Renogy battery, the same battery, or I could get a full refund. I decided to vote with my dollar and get a full refund and not give Renogy any more of my money. Then that opened up a whole nother can of worms they told me they couldn't refund my car due to their system update or something that they wanted to PayPal me the money. I'm like, okay, cool. PayPal is instant. You know, they could just transfer me the money and I can get a new battery. Well, that wasn't the case. Somehow the tech forgot to send it over to financial. And I waited three days waiting for my PayPal to come through. Finally called. They said, oh, we don't know what happened. We're so sorry. We're going to get on it. It's going to take 24 to 48 hours for me to contact financial and then another three to five business days on top of that for PayPal to give me my money. So now I'm eight days deep after they already confirmed that they would give me a refund. I am not happy with Renogy. So I went ahead and I went ahead and I got a different brand. This is a Chins battery I found on Amazon. Uh, I saw the review from Will Prouse, DIY Solar with Will Prouse on YouTube about these batteries. This is a smart battery. It has internal heater and uh, Bluetooth, just like my Renogy battery. It's a 100 amp hour lithium battery. Pretty much a direct replacement, but this one was about $150 cheaper. I think I paid $398. I'll show you my Amazon uh, order right now. And today we're gonna test it out. I have an inverter hooked up here, just like I tested on my first round to determine the Renogy battery was bad. And I'll go grab my heat gun and we'll get it set up. Uh, the heat gun draws like 65 to 70 amps, if I remember right, from my Renogy test. But uh, 
yeah, we're gonna test this cheap Chinese Chins battery and see if it does better than Renogy. I'm assuming that it will. And you know, like not to say anything bad about Renogy batteries. Uh, I could have just got a bad one. You know, that's no, no harm, no foul. My real gripe is with Renogy's customer service. On a scale of one to 10, I would give them um, like a negative three. The responses didn't seem like the people really spoke that great of English. Not, you know, again, not to discriminate against people not speaking English, but like if you're gonna sell to an American consumer, you should be able to contact an American consumer and give them the answers that they need without having to email tech support for a week. It was kind of frustrating to say the least. So uh, yeah, I chose to get a different brand. So if you're watching this, I wouldn't buy Renogy. If it was my dollar, I would get something different for a better value like this Chins battery. So let's go ahead and test it and see if it lives up um, at least better than the Renogy. Uh, I would get about a day and a half of heater runtime before my battery would turn off. So I'm assuming this is gonna give me triple that. If uh, my battery is turning off at 75%, I'm hoping this one will go down to zero and I'll get an extra three days out of it. So we'll see, let's get it on. All right, so here we are. I got the battery charged up to 100%. And this is the test that I used to determine that my Renogy battery was bad. I have an inverter hooked up to the battery and I have a heat gun. This draws a significant amount of amperage. And we're gonna see how long it runs and see if we'll get past 70% because my Renogy battery would turn off at 70%. I'll show you the screenshot. I also got a low cell voltage warning along with it. And that's the information that I provided to Renogy to get them to actually take the battery back and test it themselves. And then they determined the battery was faulty. So we're gonna see if my cheap Chin's battery is gonna do better than the Renogy. This battery has a max discharge current of 100 amps. And if I remember correctly, this thing was pulling about 70. So let's uh, get it on and see what it says. I got the battery charged up to 100%. And this is the test that I used to determine that my Renogy battery was bad. I have an inverter hooked up to the battery and I have a heat gun. This draws a significant amount of amperage. And we're gonna see how long it runs and see if we'll get past 70% because my Renogy battery would turn off at 70%. I'll show you the screenshot. I also got a low cell voltage warning along with it. And that's the information that I provided to Renogy to get them to actually take the battery back and test it themselves. And then they determined the battery was faulty. So we're gonna see if my cheap Chin's battery is gonna do better than the Renogy. This battery has a max discharge current of 100 amps. And if I remember correctly, this thing was pulling about 70. So let's uh, get it on and see what it says. We're going to control, turn on our discharge switch. And boom. Got our heat gun on. And we are drawing 64.17 amps, 64.2 amps. So theoretically, if we have 101 amp hours and we're drawing 64 amps, we have an hour and 35 minutes till this battery will be at zero. So uh, I'll check in with you guys in a little bit and we'll see where we're at, see if it turns off at 70% like my Renogy battery did. All right, so just doing a quick check in here. I still got the heat gun going over there and I'm sitting at 73% battery. So that's uh, promising. And if I scroll down, I can look at my cell voltages individually. I'm hitting 3.24, 3.24, 3.24 and 3.24. The Renogy battery, the first cell was draining before the other cells, and that's what was triggering the low cell voltage cutoff. All right, it's a little windy, so hopefully you can hear me. This is a screenshot from that time that I did the test. Uh, you can see 77.3% and the cell voltages were 2.7. Sorry, it's not really in focus. 2.7. 
2.7, 3 3.2, 3.2, 3.2. If I go to the next one, that's when I got the message, 77%. So this battery is already doing better. And I'm at 2.5. I couldn't get the whole screen in one. I couldn't get the whole screenshot all in one. So I had to do two screenshots, but uh, yeah, there's battery cell under voltage warning. And then if you look, I have 2.5 volts on cell one, 3.2, 3.2, and 3.2. So shutting off because this first cell was draining faster than And if we go back, now we're at 70%. Same thing, all the voltages are spot on. So it's, the Chins is a cheaper battery, same options, has an internal heater, has Bluetooth, 100 amp hours, and this one is performing way better. All right, 57%, all my cells are still balanced. I'm gonna call this test a uh, success and be happy with my new battery. Renogy sucks. And I don't just say Renogy sucks because their battery crapped out. It's really their customer service. They would have been cool and quick and confident in their product. I probably would have just got the new Renogy battery, but I wasn't happy with their customer service. And if I could save money, might as well do that. So. Get yourself a Chins battery and don't waste your money on Renogy.